Hello, doing a quick recording here. We're going to be going over this Lenovo S30 and we will be upgrading the CPU cooler. Um, got this nice tower cooler off of AliExpress. It's something like 25 Canadian dollars. And yeah, we're just going to be upgrading the CPU cooler here. Originally, this had the Lenovo S30 cooler on here. Um, but just the way a Lenovo does their fan control, I really don't like it. Um, yeah, you can't really put a CPU in higher than like an E5-1620. Uh, those CPUs are four cores, eight threads, and those themselves at 100% run at about 74 degrees. And this, uh, this system here, it's the first generation of uh, Socket 2011. So that means it can only support Sandy Bridge CPUs. And yeah, all we're gonna be doing here is replacing the CPU I currently have in here, which we'll find out is, I believe, the E5-1607. But we'll find out in a second anyways as I just quickly clean this off using a paper towel. And of course you can use alcohol which would be better. But yeah, it's an E5. Oh, no, this is the E5-1650. Never mind. Swap this one out earlier. But yeah, we'll be popping this out and testing the new AliExpress cooler as well. Yeah, the CPU we'll be putting in <laughs> is going to be the E5-2690. Uh, it's the V1. I got it right here. I pulled these out of my... T5610 so I've always like yeah preferably I like the Ivy Bridge CPUs better like the uh, Xeon what is it I can't get this to focus but like the Xeon E5 2650 V2 um, yeah I recently did a video on those and those are much 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 better they run a lot cooler and quieter um, so yeah if your, C if your system does support both Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge CPUs. Go for the Ivy Bridge CV CPUs. They're so, so much better. Uh, but yeah, all we're doing here is quickly putting the CPU in place. And then we are going to apply some thermal compound, which I have a bunch of here. Uh, I was gonna use MX4, but I don't know if this will work, so I'm just gonna use the included cheap Chinese packet here. Um, this is actually relatively decent thermal compound. I have used it a couple times now, and it works just fine. The biggest thing that'll affect uh, your CPU cooling is more the heat sink itself and not so much like, yeah, the CPU thermal compound is important, but it's like if you have a really small and not so great uh, CPU cooler, it's not going to make a huge difference. So yeah, just applying the thermal compound here. And one thing that you will want to get is a an adapter for the LGA 2011 socket because the stock one that comes with this cooler uh, is not it won't fit on here and I'll show you that in a second to just spread this compound around There's plenty of compounds, so there's gonna be leftover. So I'm gonna take some off my finger um, So it's not yeah, it doesn't go off the CPU and onto the other motherboard components So we're just gonna quickly wipe a little bit off but leaving just enough to take care of everything else that we need And that should be good enough for now just Spreading it out a little bit yeah, this part of the video, we're only going to be doing uh, the hardware itself, and then maybe later I'll do one showing the performance of the E5 2690 V1 um, or V0. But yeah, this is the adapter for LGA 2011. Um, it is different. What I can quickly do is grab the original adapter, which came with the, um, with the cooler, which is here. This is the one that we'll be using. And because this here, won't, it won't fit on the board properly. And what I'll do is I'll just make sure we're in focus. Yeah, it won't fit on the board properly just because of how large the socket is here. That all sticks in there. So you might be able to see like the design is a little bit different. Uh, the 2011 is just, it's only meant for 2011. This here can go on LGA 1155, 1150, all the other CPU sockets. But anyways, we'll be mounting this here. It does come with four screws. So I just need to get this lined up. And hopefully this will work. I haven't actually tried it out yet. Um, that's why I'm just recording it in the video. But yeah, I just need to figure out which direction it's supposed to go on. Yeah, I think this will work. I can't tell if we're bumping into anything or if it's just how it how it's fitting on. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure how this is supposed to go on. But what are we pushing against here? Yeah, it's a complicated. It's, it's not complicated, but it's going to be a little bit more challenging, just because there are certain aspects of the socket that are interfering. So, for example, this latch here, 
is interfering a little bit. So what I may end up having to do is take a exacto knife. This is not planned on the video, but take the exacto knife and cut it a little bit to make it fit. Um, yeah, that's how I want the orientation of the CPU cooler to go on to and well, how to go on to the motherboard here. So that means that I need to have my two retention clips on either side here. So that means I just have to quickly cut, <laughs> cut away a bit here. And you generally want to be more careful than this and not cut towards your finger, but yeah, we're just gonna, it's soft plastic, so it cuts pretty easily. Don't wanna do it really in the camera shot here because in case I do cut myself, that would look silly. But yeah, you just wanna be really careful to get this to fit properly. There we go. You see, I took a good chunk out. Or can you see? You might not be able to see it properly, but yeah, it's. Uh, I took a good chunk out of this here, so yeah. I'm gonna be putting this back on top, and yeah, it fits perfectly now. So that's kind of a quick hack you can do there. Is just grab an exacto knife, cut it a little bit. Does it fit properly? Yeah, it fits good enough. Anyways, um, then the next thing you want to do is quickly grab your screws and put your screws on top and then screw them in. That's a nice thing with the LGA 2011 socket is it's all screwed down. Just making sure I can find all my screws here. So we've got four screws, one for each corner. And then you just have to tighten these down properly. I will mention that I have worked with a CPU cooler before and I find putting a CPU cooler on with retention clips can be very difficult sometimes. Um, also to note, we will be blocking uh, two of the memory slots, so um, yeah, that's something to consider. But the nice thing is you will have four active memory slots available, and I'm using 8 gigabyte modules. 32 gig of RAM should be plenty. I don't know why you'd need more than that. Um, obviously, you probably could have a use case for more, but that's something to keep in mind that you will be blocking some of the RAM slots. So yeah, that's something just to keep in mind there. As we tighten these up here, next thing I'm thinking about is getting the CPU orientation. Um, the motherboard and how it's designed is to have the CPU mount with the airflow going up. Um, one way you can kind of tell that is the base of the CPU cooler is a little bit wider on one side. And then here on the motherboard, there's a little like, you want it to go on this side of the motherboard. Like, <laughs> how am I, how do I explain this? So it's, it's wide here and the wide part will go across like that. Otherwise, if I put the CPU cooler on um, like this here, um, we're gonna be kind of bumping against part of the uh, retention arms and stuff. So maybe we're not gonna get as good of a thermal contact on the bottom of the, uh, of the, uh, well, the CPU to the IHS here. Well, this is not the IHS, this is just the, anyways. Um, yeah, we'll be putting this on here carefully, of course. Um, but it is a little bit, I don't, I don't want to say finicky, but it will take a little bit of patience. Hopefully this is easier than the last time I did it. Come on. But yeah, my head's going to block everything unless I move over here. Oh, I'm almost knocking stuff over. But yeah, so what I need to do here is get the retention arm down and over the black part. Yeah, this part here, I can definitely tell you, is very challenging. Um, it's nice that there's room inside the case that, all right, it's done. But yeah, what I was saying, it's nice that there's room in the case to work with. I did this in a tinier case and it was really difficult and not so fun. Uh, one thing I will mention is I'm running out of space again on my phone. So if the video ends, like, but anyways, we're pretty much done here. The nice thing to consider about the Lenovo S30 and why you want to use this over the stock cooler is the stock cooler will have a fan, is a four pin fan. I can't zoom in, but the stock cooler is a four pin fan. And the four pin fan means that basically the motherboard has full control of the fan. Um, and what we're doing is we're replacing the four pin fan with two, like we have two uh, 90 millimeter fans going, or 80 millimeter, one or the other, going into a three pin output here, which basically means that these fans are gonna run at 100% all the time. Um, they are a little louder. What I will do is quickly set them up we'll turn the system on. It's not going to post properly because I'm not hooking up the monitor and stuff, but oh, it, it does post. All right. Well, it's, sh it's shock start, jump started anyways. Uh, sometimes when you plug it into your power slide, but anyways, that's, that's how loud it's going to be. I'll put my mic closer. 
Like it's really not that much louder than whatever your ambient noise will be. Um, and especially once you get the side of your case on, it'll be a lot, a lot quieter. Like I'm moving the little mic around here, but yeah, anyways, I think overall I'm, I'm going to be excited with how this goes. Um, you will, we will be putting a full-size graphics card in just above, like just in front of the CPU 